Hello YouTube and welcome back into another Kingdom Come Deliverance video. Today we're doing another fan requested armor guide. Today's request comes from Grant890Q and the request is, can you do an armor guide for Henry when he rides the horse with a flag in his hand art? And uh, this immediately popped into my head as one of my favorite uh, pieces of promo art for the game. And yes, I can do an armor guide for it. Now, these pieces of art are drawn by people who are also not the same people that uh, put the armor in the game. So. They don't always fit perfectly to a one-to-one -one comparison, but this time we were able to get it pretty close because this is actually pretty, I shouldn't say easy to replicate in the game, but the items do exist to make it look a lot like it does in this art, or at least I think so. So let's just jump right into it with weapons. And so with weapons, the first stop, as you can see in the promo art, is a arming sword. He's got a shorter arming sword, and it, it's a standard cruciform type. And the pommel of the mercenary's bedfellow and the cross guard fit very closely with it. You can't see a whole lot of detail on the scabbard or the hilt. So I think that it's this. It could have also been the old uh, family heirloom. That looked similar, but I think this one fits the closest. So the mercenary's bedfellow is the sword we're going to go with. You don't see a shield in the picture, but based on the colors, and I'm kind of treating this as a standard bearer, I figured uh, this is supposed to be Henry while he's in the service of Sir Adzig. Potentially, I don't know, scouting out an area leading an army or uh, maybe just delivering a message for Sir Adzig. Something of that. But, uh, so I figured the Scallet Shield fits very well, and this is my favorite Scallet Shield, as it's very ornate and looks very cool. So we obviously include that as well. And then, of course, a dagger, because as you know, and you should know if you watch my, uh, armor guides ever, everyone needs a dagger. Those are the weapons for the standard bearer. Let's move on to the clothing. So for the clothing, we start out with our basic bling. We've got the silver neck chain, the silver ring, and the silver spurs. All very nice, but not, uh, as flashy as Henry could be. So we've got those three items. Then we have the quiet dark shoes, because you can see he's wearing some sort of short boot or shoes in the uh, picture and these are some of the my favorite ones in the game to use just because they've got some decent stat boosts and uh, they look cool so we've got those the red hood because clearly he's wearing a red hood uh, there are three variants of red hood in the game this one's just my favorite one so it's two-toned slightly you can barely tell but I like this one the best tight black hose because I think it looks like he's wearing them and it makes sense because the whole theme of the armor is a little bit subdued other than the red hood but so that's why we went with the tight black hose and then the dark Silesian Gamson and now with this one I considered going with one of the plain black shirts but you can't really see too much detail into his shirt and I think I mean this one provides a decent armor boost so it makes sense to go with this one if I was trying to match it perfectly with the picture I'd probably go with like a black shirt there's like fancy black shirts or something like that that probably look more like it does in the picture but we're gonna go with the Dark Silesian Gamson so that's the base layer the clothing let's add the next layer on top and then see what it looks like okay so for the next layer we added the short noble hauberk and I went with this one because you can't really see chainmail in what he's wearing but He's wearing stuff that blocks the areas that would show the short noble hauberk. So if we're going to put chainmail on him at all, it's going to be this. Either this or the short common hauberk, but the noble hauberk has better stats. So I went with that. And given that it doesn't look like he's wearing super comprehensive plate armor in here, it makes sense that he would wear decent chainmail. So that's why I went with this. So we have the short noble hauberk, padded chosses. You can clearly see he's not wearing chainmail chosses in the picture. But he might be wearing padded chosses. I could make the argument for it. So since we get that armor boost, I'm going to put him on. And then the reinforced mail collar. Again, you can't see for sure if he's wearing a mail collar. He might have a mail coif that's just pulled down. Hard to say. But you don't see him wearing head armor in the picture, so I didn't want to put it in here. But arguably you could say that maybe he's got a mail collar on. So I popped that on as well. So that's, uh, that's what we look like with two layers on. Let's put the third layer on and put it all together. Okay, so for the third layer, this is where we're going to start hitting into some bones of contention. Because in this uh, promo art, obviously, it's pretty unique looking. But I think we were able to replicate it pretty closely, and I'll show you why. So here's the light lamellar armor. That's what we're wearing on our torso. There are two variants of this that you can find in the game. This one's more common. It's uh, this, and then it's got this like cloth belt. And then there's one without the cloth belt. It just ends right there in the middle. I decided to go with this one because you can see in... The picture that it's it's some sort of coat of plates or lamellar armor or something because you can see different uh, pieces of armor kind of linked together now in the picture they're spaced apart more which is less historically accurate than this is uh, if you were making a type of plate or scale armor where you had interlapping uh, pieces of metal you wouldn't want gaps between them or you wouldn't like you see in a lot of movies where they've got pieces of metal with chain mail in between them that offers less protection than this or just wearing chainmail. So nobody would actually do that. So there are 
three items in the game that I found that look kind of like this. You have the heavy lamellar armor, the light lamellar armor, and then the cumin brigandine. Uh, and out of all of them, I think the light lamellar armor looks the most like it does in the picture. Even though it doesn't have as good of stats as the heavy lamellar armor, it's the one we went with here because, like I said, it, it looks more like it. And then I went with the one with the belt because I think you can kind of see some cloth dangling off his waist in the picture. So that's why I went with this one. Then we have the old plate pauldrons. And now, as you can see in the picture, it's not perfect because in the picture he's got... He's got pauldrons, the shoulder armor for the up top, and he's also got whatever that piece of armor, I always forget what it's called, but the one that goes in your armpit to protect right here. Most suits of plate armor in real life actually use that in this time period. Uh, none of the ones in this game do, except for Sir Divish's, but obviously we don't have anything to replicate that. Uh, it does, however, also have elbow armor, and I think you can see something covering the top of the forearm in the picture. So... There is no item exactly like that in this game, but this one is, uh, after going through a bunch of the different pauldrons, this one's the one that looks most like it. So I went the old plate pauldrons. Then we have the Milanese gauntlets. Here I just went with plain silver looking gauntlets because that's what he's got on in the picture. Pretty easy there, and these ones have the best stats out of all the plain silver looking ones. And then we have, for his leg armor, you can see he's just got plate armor that covers his, like, upper thigh. We don't have anything like that in the game, but we do have some shortened brigandine chosses, and so I figured that would have to do. So we popped those on. And so that is everything. That's all of his armor, as shown in the picture. So from that, we have stats of the total value coming out at 5,186 groschen. So this is a pretty cheap suit of armor. I like it role-playing wise. I think it feels a lot like what Henry, especially prior to Vranik, or maybe just prior to Pribislavitz, I think this is what he would be wearing. I think this this fits very well lore-wise and immersion-wise. So if you want to role-play as, uh, I guess, realistic Henry, something that Henry could probably afford or would, would find along the way, because this looks super scavenged. This whole suit of armor looks like stuff that you would he would easily find doing the missions that he does early in the game. So... There's that. Uh, but yeah, so 5,186 corrosion for the value. Then for the average armor rating, or AAR, we have 51.5. And now that may not be too surprising, as this isn't the most comprehensive suit of armor we've ever put together. We don't have male chosses on. Um, pauldrons are very low-level pauldrons. Uh, torso armor is really far down on the list, so is the leg stuff. Uh, basically, really low-down stuff. And the biggest weak point, no head protection. So... 51.5, not actually too bad considering we have those big gaps in it, and it does look pretty cool. So then finally for a weight, we have 77.4 pounds. So lighter than some suits, not what I would consider, strictly speaking, light armor. This would fit into the medium armor class. Uh, so those are the stats for the suit as is. But since we're going to test the suit out in combat, I'm going to show what Henry would wear as soon as he's ready for battle. Because it makes sense that you wouldn't ride around wearing all your head armor. In fact... Most people, unless they were in a dangerous area, which, to be fair, this game takes place in, uh, would not ride around wearing their armor in general. If anything, a lot of people, historically speaking, would ride around wearing their padded Gamson armor because that offers some protection. Actually, historically speaking, a lot more than most movies, TV shows, or video games would would suggest. Uh, but so that would be something that people would more commonly ride around in if they were, you know, wealthy enough to have armor at all. Or maybe some mail. Because even though it's very heavy, it's more flexible, easier to ride around in on horseback. We're just going to assume that he rides around like this, and then when he goes into combat, he puts on some head protection. So let's pop that on. And for head protection, I felt like this suit of armor was definitely a hound skull suit. I went back and forth on whether I wanted to use a kettle hat or common bassinet or something like that, but the hound skull just felt right. So that's what we put on there. The hound skull, the noble's milk coif, and the dark padded coif. And with this increased head protection, that brings our average armor rating up to 75.75, putting this right in the sweet spot for medium armor. So obviously the only major weak point prior to our adjustment was the head. Uh, the other stuff could all be better, but the head was that major weak point that's putting you into the one to two hit kill zone. So with that and our shield equipped, this is what the adjusted suit looks like. So let's see what it looks like in combat. All right, we're coming up on our uh, combatant zone. So let's quickly try to take these people out. Oh boy, there's a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> If you can kill this guy before he gets a shield out. Okay, good. We chuck one of them out. Whoa! Oh. There we go. There we go. Two of them down. 
Obviously, the old jabbing method works rel relatively well. This is a nice suit of armor. It's not, uh, not too heavy. So it's, uh, I'm getting a lot of that stamina back. That's a, one thing I always try to tell people. I'm like, yes, the heavy armor offers great protection. And if you're, if you're pretty good with the combos and you don't get yourself surrounded too quick, uh, you can usually take on just about anyone. But if you go for something a little bit lighter that still offers decent protection to that medium armor range, you definitely your stamina regen is so much faster, so you just you don't get slaughtered as quickly. Uh, but that was pretty easy. Like I said, uh, the only move I moved, uh, the only move I used in that combat was well, there were two: block and stab. So worked out pretty well when we did that. But let's take one more look at the armor. All right, so we got a little blood on our sword, little dirt on our clothes, scuffed up our hood a little bit, but other than that, completely undamaged. Uh, I also don't think we lost any health. So, yeah, health's at 100, so we did very well there. Uh, again, that request came from Grant890Q. That was to do the, uh, I, I, ca I was just calling it Henry the Standard Bearer. But that's what we have today, so uh, that's all we're going to show you. If you have any requests, of course, as always, share them down in the comment section below. But thanks for watching, and have a nice day, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.